The Tesla Cybertruck finally got the big update we've been waiting for, Tesla Vision Park Assist. This is such a big vehicle and it's wild to me. They shipped it to customers with no park assist, no sensors, just this giant big thing to get used to. And it utilizes steer by wire and rear wheel steering. So it's very unfamiliar when you first use it. It's a great vehicle but it's a little bit challenging to get used to. But now that we have park assist, I think it's really gonna help people. I'm gonna strap y'all in into your home and let's get started. So we are testing out the new vision-based park assist on the Tesla Cybertruck. Now this is nothing new for other Teslas, but for the Cybertruck, this is very new and exciting. So now as we get close to an object and slow down, the park assist starts loading. So we can get a very good idea about where the lines are. It even tells you when to stop. Now let's try it in reverse. You can see the camera. This is what I used to use, but now we have the park assist. You can use that as well if you're confident in its abilities. And that's what we're gonna find out. It tells you when to stop because there's a curb right there. It's perfect. It actually thinks we're very close to the line, but according to the camera, we're really not. So, I mean, it's a little bit inaccurate, I would say. But the Cybertruck's a long vehicle. Sometimes the rear camera will fool you. So I wanna get out and check. So we should be really close to the line. Oh, whoa, okay, we are. So we're closer on the front than I thought. So the visualization was actually pretty accurate. I was judging by the rear camera, which shows us farther away from the line, which is true. Okay, that shut me up. It knows better than me. And can we just appreciate tap to drive? I just put my foot on the brake and we are in drive. It's truly amazing. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I love changing gears on the touchscreen. It's so easy. I'm gonna loop around again, past the playground. Don't worry about me. I'm not looking like, <laughs> I'm just trying to play with my Tesla, not your children. The general consensus is that it's not using the front-facing camera yet, just because the Cybertruck is the only vehicle to have that in Tesla's lineup. But I do think it will come soon. But I will be honest, it's a little bit disappointing that it doesn't take advantage of it when it took so many months. Now here's like a curb right here. Let's see if this is any different, if it's any like more helpful or visual visualizes it any better. So I'm kind of using my rear camera. It's telling me to stop. I mean, it looks like if I went any further, I probably would have curbed it. <laughs> um, so let's see, like, if it said stop, was it being dramatic or should I have actually, yeah. Like it's pretty dead on. Like if you kept going, you probably would have curbed your wheel. Now the Cybertruck, you're not gonna curb anything. You're gonna do damage to the curb, if anything. Now in the past, this feature did give a lot of false positives. So some owners have been known to run into things because their vehicle would tell them to stop. And it's like boy who cried wolf scenario. But I'm gonna listen and I'm fixing my orientation. <laughs> Not like that, I'm still gay. Um, it's telling me to stop. This is all lit up red. We seem to be a very good distance away from the line. It's very aware of where we shouldn't be. It's very aware of the line next to us. It doesn't see all of the other lines though, which, I mean, it can improve there. I know Teslas can see way better than that. This is telling us where the Cybertruck is gonna go, which I know that doesn't seem very important, but since the Cybertruck has steer by wire and rear wheel steering, that's actually very important for newer drivers as they get used to the vehicle. So look, we're gonna put it in reverse and just pay attention to there. It's turning to, sh to kind of show us where we're going to go. So right now, if we keep going in the trajectory, we're not really going to make this lane. See? So I kind of knew I needed to correct myself. That's actually beautiful. And same with going forward. Like, 
you would think it's easy to go forward, but it's kind of challenging too, because the Cybertruck's front is very small. So you really think you're close, like I would probably stop right now if I wasn't used to the Cybertruck, but if we utilize, let's not even look at the camera. Let's just use the 3D Park Assist. So I'm gonna stop when it tells us to stop. So I would think I'm about to run into like the woods. It told us to stop. Let's take a look. Now we could have gone a little bit farther, but for the sake of it, that's pretty good. Now keep in mind the Cybertruck is a big vehicle. So we are sticking out ever so slightly. So it was to our benefit to go up a little bit farther, but I mean, I've seen big giant trucks stick out way more than this. That's a pretty good park job. And like you saw, I swiped away the camera. I just used the visualizations. Now you don't want to rely on them, but just to show you, they are pretty accurate. Hi, this is Jeremy from the editing room. That's foreshadowing and I didn't even realize it. Just watch a few more minutes and you'll really see what I mean. Do not rely on the park assist, especially right now. Have y'all noticed like the really good audio? Like, do you hear the sound of air conditioning going? No, because there isn't. I'm hot and sweaty and uncomfortable in here, but I have the AC turned off for you so you can enjoy the better quality. So just, you know, give me a thumbs up for that and maybe subscribe just for me suffering for the sake of sharing this information with the world. Okay, let's try to pull in straight right here. It's a very weird situation. Oh, we are close to this bush. Anyway, okay. So I'm gonna pull in with no cameras at all. I really can't tell where I'm going. Um, for real though, like when's the park assist gonna come up? Hello? Okay, I'm a little bit scared. Okay, we're good. There it is, finally. Like, there's no lines. Like, why does it not go away? Why does it not see all the lines? Like, there's so many lines down there. I feel like this one, it has it confused. It's telling me to stop, but like, we're good. So it thinks we are like basically on the curb, touching the wheel. This is where I think it kind of failed. See, we were very far, but it was kind of a, you know, a weird parking spot. The curbs are very elevated. It's different from everything else. Okay, so for that situation, I was more comfortable utilizing the cameras, to be honest. But you have to keep in mind, this is the first ever iteration for the Tesla Cybertruck Auto Park visualizations. It's not gonna be perfect. And so far, it's better when it first came out for the Model 3 and Model Y and stuff like that. The final test is if we can back into our garage. And one thing I wanna point out, it says press to reverse. The blue right here designates, why is there a FedEx person in front of us? <laughs> They're taking a picture. Um, see, nobody believes me that people like the Cybertruck. Anyway, um, the blue designates the direction we're going to go. So it says press to reverse. There's no guessing the way you're going to go, you know. So we're backing up. It edges along the grass very nicely. Now this turns a little bit complicated because, see, I'm turning the yoke a little bit too hard. And it's basically like, if you do that, you're going to go in the grass. So I like that. Now, like right here, I would think I'm gonna run into the Model S, but I'm not. And even here, if you're not a um, skilled driver with the Cybertruck, it feels like we're kind of close, but we're not. You can see right there confidently where the other vehicle is. Everything is good. The garage door closed on us for some reason, I guess because we took so long, we were getting photographed. Now it can see the car next to us, the grass, and now it can even see the garage. So now we can confidently back up. No, we're not gonna hit the car. No, that we're not gonna hit the side of the garage. It's not beeping at us. So we are good. And this is all while the sun is definitely like beating in my face. It's kind of hard to see, but the Cybertruck can see great. 
Now I want to stop when it says to stop. It's beeping. It's kind of showing all the danger zones. It's kind of cool. It even recognizes the top of the garage door as a danger zone. Like you're kind of close to that. Watch out. Okay. Now it's supposed to stop. Is that good? See, the thing is, it telling me to stop is only for behind us. It's not smart enough to know like if the garage door would hit us or not. Now what I'm curious about, what does the visualization look like when the door shuts? Now it's not actively changing, which is kind of a bummer. See, like that's weird. Uh, does it think we can drive through the door? Uh, that's a little bit troubling. <laughs> because this garage door is bougie and see-through and glass, the Cybertruck doesn't think it's a door. <laughs> so, um, you know, don't drive with just the visualizations, please. Use your eyes as well. Maybe also use the camera. Definitely some work needs to be done here, but it's overall a very promising package. Yo, I think the Tesla Vision Park Assist is a win on the Cybertruck, and I've passed this playground for the third time looping around, so I think it's time to call this video over before some concerned parents start maybe calling Chris Hansen on me. I'm excited about this only because it means full self-driving is coming. And do I really care about full self-driving? Right now, it, it, it's not actually full self-driving. What I just want is autopilot. Autopilot on the Cybertruck is so needed because this is a great road trip vehicle, um, but I need autopilot. That's all I want. Just give me basic autopilot, please. Oh my God, thank God I can turn this AC back on.